Hi, I'm Jenny Shampo. I'm the director of the Book of Mormon Art Catalog, and I'm here today with Ashley Whitaker. Ashley, um, just until recently, was the head curator and the Roy and Carol Christensen curator of religious art at the Brigham Young University Museum of Art. Her research interests span religious art and visual culture, as well as Western regional American art. Um, today, we're looking at the scriptures in 1 Nephi 11 through 15, and this piece um, called Vision of Nephi by John Held Sr., done in about 1888. Um, first of all, Ashley, who, who is John Held Sr.? Yeah, so John Held Sr. is an artist in the early church. We don't hear about him very often. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, we hear more about his son, John Held Jr., yeah. who was, became very famous for illustrating back in New York. Um, but John Held was a convert from Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Um, was actually brought to Utah by a member of the church who was looking for young, talented individuals in Europe. And uh, John converted, came to Utah, was adopted by that oh. gentleman, and, and began a career mostly as a, a printer, engraver. He was a draftsman. Um, and so he was one of, I believe, four artists that was hired to create an illustrated Book of Mormon, the story of the Book of Mormon. And uh, George Reynolds was yeah. the gentleman who sponsored that project. It was his brainchild. And so from that, we get some of the earliest published illustrations of the Book of Mormon. So it's a pretty significant series. Yeah. Um, and maybe what John Held could be remembered for most artistically, mm -hmm. though, Fun fact, he was remembered for having a band. He played oh. the cornet, and he had a band that traveled throughout the territories. So oh, I didn't know that about there him. There we go. <laughs> and so this is called Vision of Nephi. What, who are the figures that we see here in this piece? Yeah, so in Vision of Nephi, we have, um, I mean, it's a fairly simple landscape setting. And Held, I think, is taking his cues from the text. Mm -hmm. So in 1 Nephi 11, mm -hmm. Nephi desires to see what his father Lehi was shown in vision. Mm -hmm. And so we read in the text that the spirit comes to Nephi and um, kind of is willing to give Nephi his desire to understand this vision. And so it says that the spirit takes him to a high mountain that he'd never been on before. So we see that here in the text, kind of this mountainscape, they're on a cliff, and there is Nephi, I'm, I'm guessing he's the figure on the left, and then there is an angelic figure here that comes into the vision um, there on the right that seems in the text to point different scenes to Nephi and, uh -huh. and cue him as to the meaning. And then, of course, we have in the clouds, we have two figures. We have a female and a young baby. So we've got the Virgin Mary, the mm -hmm. mother of Christ, and then the infant Christ. And at this particular part of the vision is where Nephi is shown um, the Son of God mm -hmm. being born. And the angel comes in to act as Nephi's guide, and Nephi wants to know what the tree of life represents. And um, in, uh, in answer to that, he begins to show him first a vision of the city of Jerusalem, which Nephi would have recognized. Mm -hmm. He lived there. And then Nazareth, which he recognized. And then he shows a virgin mm -hmm. by herself. And then that seems to disappear, and then we have this vision that we see here in verse 20 that Nephi sees a virgin holding an infant in her arms, mm -hmm. and the angel reveals that this is the Son of God that has been born. Yeah, I think that's so interesting in, in these scriptures where Nephi asks a question, and the angel, instead of just answering that question, shows him an image, and, yes. and, and then after, <clears throat> after he shows him this vision of Mary and the Christ child, then the angel says, okay, so now do you know what the tree of life is really about? And Nephi says, oh yeah, it's the love of uh, love of God, um, yeah. which is the most precious thing above all. And yeah, beautiful. I agree. I think that's such a good insight that that he leads him through these images and that Nephi's inference from this image is, I get it. It's about, it's the love of God. Yeah. Like, not just that, oh, okay, that's the Messiah, but like, 
oh, I get it. It's the love of God. It's mm -hmm. this condescension of God right. that the Savior would arrive on earth that way like yeah. needing to be held by a mother and raised by oh. this this yeah. mortal mother yeah um and i think some things that are really interesting about how john held approaches this mm -hmm. image is that i mean he he seems to be the first that yeah. we know of mm -hmm. who's depicting this scene right. and so what he does i think is interesting is that he looks to um traditional christian imagery of the Virgin Mary and Christ, or what are some call sometimes called the Madonna and Child, mm -hmm. a very prominent motif throughout mm -hmm. Christian imagery, mm -hmm. particularly in what we might call the Catholic tradition, mm -hmm. where Mary was very much venerated almost as a divine mediator in and of herself. Mm -hmm. um, so he looks to that common motif. I mean, this could have been a, based on a painting by the Renaissance artist Raphael sure. or a number of other. Um, Italian painters mm -hmm. or other European painters, John Held has seen this type of imagery before. I mean, perhaps in his native Switzerland, uh, perhaps mm -hmm. he's seen it. Um, some scholars have asserted that there were more magazines and things available to Latter-day Saints in the early territory than we might than mm -hmm. we might realize. Interesting. Uh, we know that some of the early artists trained by getting magazines and periodicals that showed fine art. Mm -hmm. um, in any case, it's something that I think for Christians and for Latter-day Saints in his time, it would have been an image that they were familiar with either from Europe or American Christianity, right, right. seeing this uh, virgin and child there. Um, it, do it does seem surprising today, right, to think this is yeah. a Latter-day Saint depiction of Nephi and, and the virgin, which looks... Right? It looks so Catholic. But like you said, he was drawing on the traditions that they had at that time. Yeah. And it's definitely mm -hmm. not uh, a way of portraying Mary and Christ that's persisted in Latter-day Saint art. Right. I think for that reason, yeah. Yeah. Um, that it, it maybe is too close to that earlier tradition. And mm -hmm. artists since have wanted to do something different. Yeah. Um, but what is interesting is if, if held, and he is, looking at this earlier... You know, European tradition of mm -hmm. Mary and Christ. With his angel, he is very much taking cues from Latter-day Saint theology mm -hmm. because it's very common in Christian images of angels that angels will have wings. Yeah. And in many cases, angels, actually for centuries they were debated. The nature of angels yeah. was debated. And often they were considered genderless. Mm -hmm. But here, I mean, it seems like we have a male angel and clearly no mm -hmm. wings there, that he yeah. is um, after the form of a human. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to Joseph Smith, mm -hmm. who through his own visions, through the revelations received, was able to actually establish mm -hmm. the nature of angels, which was a new, a, a rather new definition that angels are the same specimen, they're human. Yeah. They're just in a different yeah. stage of eternal progression. Fascinating. I noticed he's so. even, he's grounded on this ledge with Nephi as opposed to, right, the vision happening in the clouds. So yes. Yeah, he's, he's like a real material presence in the world with Nephi. Yeah. yeah. Do you, can you share your personal reaction to either this piece or um, these, these scriptures that describe his vision? Yeah, I, I really love this piece. Yeah. I really love this piece. And it is, to me, it's very unique. I mean, now that down the road from this, um, 1888 to the present, I feel like we often talk about Lehi's dream. Mm -hmm. And it's, and artistically, that has become a very, um, I'll say popular subject, that yeah. there's a lot of imagery about a Lehi's lot. dream. Yeah. Because it's so, I mean, there's so much to it. It's so vivid to stage that dream. Mm -hmm. um, What's interesting to me is that I often like to, to wonder why. Why, yeah. if you could pick, <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe a selection of illustrations for the Book of Mormon. I find it really interesting that, that Held and Reynolds, um, that they honed in on the vision of Nephi rather than Lehi. Mm -hmm. And um, as I have thought about that, you know, there's so much to Lehi's dream, but one way that you could read it is that Lehi's dream often centers on a concern about um, covenant, sticking to 
keeping to the covenant mm -hmm. and achieving salvation, the tree of life, what that is, but a concern about his family, yeah. about his sons yeah. mm -hmm. and how they engage with that and what the consequences and distractions are with the great and spacious building. Um, we know Lehi knew about the Messiah, maybe from that same dream. Mm -hmm. He does talk about the Messiah, but more in context of the foreseeing the history of the Jews and that covenant. Okay. So one way to look at Nephi's vision is that as Nephi is given the vision, all of the interpretations about that vision seem to come back to Christ. What does the tree of life represent? Mm -hmm. It is the love of God through, as embodied in Jesus Christ. What do the waters represent? So often in Nephi's vision in chapter 11, it is Christ-centered, I think in a way that's a little bit different than, mm. than my reading of Lehi's dream in chapter 8. And so I love um, just the way that this image has kind of guided my thoughts in that direction of, of this, that the most important thing to pick out of that vision, mm. any of the visions between Lehi and Nephi, mm. was this moment of mm. identifying that salvation, the tree of life, is Christ, is the love of God. Yeah. And that that is a central message to both of those visionary experiences. They've chosen to illustrate it this way. So I, I really loved how that uh, opened up new insights for me. Thank you, Ashley. I really appreciate you sharing that. That was beautiful. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It's, it's a wonderful image that we don't know, we don't see often enough. All right, well, thank you for joining us today.